Welcome to Love Where You Live, a new monthly series by the Sheboygan County Chamber. I'm Betsy Alice, Executive of the Chamber, and I'll be your host for this series. Very excited this morning to welcome Chad Peleshek, the Director of Planning for the City of Sheboygan. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Marine Sanctuary Project as well as the Fresh Coast concept um, that, is being, that you're hearing about now in the news. Welcome, Chad. Good morning. I'd just like to give a little background for our viewers on the Marine Sanctuary Project, kind of where it started, how we got involved, and, and then we can move on from there. Sure. Back in the 2009-2010 uh, timeline, we were approached by NOAA, which is the National Oceanic, Admi Admi <laughs> National Oceanic Administratic Administration. Um, Thank you for that. And they, um, <laughs> They approached the city about this concept of a national marine sanctuary in the uh, waters off of Sheboygan and the coastline from Two Rivers to Port Washington and the fact that there was uh, a number of shipwrecks that could be preserved under a national process. We didn't know much about it at that time. Uh, mayor Ryan was the then mayor and we did a little bit more research about it, but um, we found out that it was a process that it, it seemed like a good uh, designation for the communities to undertake, but there was some uh, holes on the federal level in trying to get something like this approved. There was a ways of Trainer Walker to be considered for a designation undeveloped as part of that process. Um, and then it can be published in the federal register and we can ultimately become designated as a federal national marine sanctuary. And I think that one of the most important things about this, or one of the most novel parts of this, is that we have four communities involved. That is correct. So and that's three it. counties, and that all four count, uh, cities and all three counties have all signed, uh, signed on to resolutions supporting it, as well as 150 other organizations in this area. And now I think it's a matter of trying to have each community have its own unique approach to it, so that we all attract people here, um, and serve our communities with communities and to, you know right. provides that we really want this to be a uh, thought what if we a bit more about that I know people are very interested in that subject um, certainly from a business standpoint and an education standpoint there are huge ramifications for the future um, for our schools and for all the school kids you know across the Midwest that is correct and you know when we looked at where we see where we see place. Here, Yes, and they've done a great job laying out exhibits. So we've got the footwork there to send the National Marine Sanctuary piece in, connecting with our kids. It's called STEAM education, but it's really about bringing kids out and connecting them through uh, different options of getting into these types of fields at a younger age and that they, you know, ultimately when they would graduate from high school would have a basis for going into these types of um, pos positions and, and opportunities that are right here in our own county. Well, very nice. I'm going to switch a little, but it's still in the same topic area. We have the, you talked about the um, space, um, the spaceport project and how it's developed. And I have to say personally and professionally, it's been an amazing transformation. Um, we use their facility quite often for um, education events, things like that in their auditorium, and then everybody gets exposed to how different it is now, mm -hmm. how wonderful it is. But it's going to become even more wonderful from what I understand. Um, there are, is a lot of talk about um, the new project, and I'm going to let you talk about that. I think it's sure. fabulous. Sure. So a group of city leaders and nonprofits got together and said, let's build a model for what this could look like. So we came up with a three-phase project. Phase one of the project is to uh, purchase and install the science on the sphere, which is a, w there's only one other one of these in the state, and that's in the Monona, um, the Monona uh, Nature Center. And what it is is a six foot diameter globe that is a screen that turns in the middle of the room, and you've got four projectors, and you get real time data sets from NOAA. So NOAA is not only National Marine Sanctuaries, they're also the Weather Center people, they're also the Oceanic, and you know, mm -hmm. they, they have ties. ties to the whole kind of atmospheric stuff that goes on. So they've got all this data sets that they're able to um, provide to you under their program when you purchase their equipment, and they can send you real-time or past historical uh, data that you can use as an educational tool. So uh, students in our schools could come and be able to uh, participate in 
you know, those types of activities and learn real time what's happening with earthquakes and those types of things. Phase two is the development of a SEMA lab, which is a NASA uh, lab, would allow Spaceport to put the NASA logo on the outside of their building, which is huge from a marketing standpoint, and would bring in 10 or 12 different workstations into the um, into Spaceport that would be tied to NASA and that you could learn real time how um, you know the whole space evolution and all that works. And then the third phase of it is to build a new building on South Pier somewhere that could be tied to Spaceport that would really tie the sea side of things so there could be um, such things as you know real time robotic training with our companies and some of the stuff that they do um, it could be maker space if you were an entrepreneur an inventor and wanted to go and make some stuff you could have space to do that um, real life playgrounds on schooners and tying kids to the waterfront and being able to learn how to do sailing and all of that kind of stuff so that's that's probably a a four-year out or so process, but mm -hmm. it's really about trying to leverage year-round tourism and making people want to come here, even our re residents and people moving into this area, to want to be able to use this on a year-round basis um, and have an asset that would draw people in. And the whole exploration and innovation part of it, I think, is, is key to the, our differentiation as an area as we look at the marine sanctuary I, I'm very excited about it. I think it has huge potential um, uh, for everyone. It's yeah, I would agree, and I would think I, you know, I look. I don't think there's anything like this anywhere else in the state of Wisconsin or even in the Midwest to this degree. So if if we can get the support and get this done, um, I think this mm -hmm. is going to be another feather in our hat for why people would want to move here and you know why people would want to participate and get their kids involved at a younger age to start building at a younger age this workforce uh, need that we have and, and get people involved with a lot of hands-on uh, engineering and that type yeah. of stuff. I think it's an economic development engine. It sure I mean, is. I really do. I think there are so many aspects to it and, and the whole attraction idea you mentioned I fully fully believe that you know, in addition to all the wonderful recreation we have, all of the education assets, all the things that our county offers, now to have this Correct. on top of it and to become the center for that in the whole state or the Midwest. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say, I was lucky enough to go to Alpena to visit the National Marine Sanctuary there with a group from Sheboygan. And seeing that science on the sphere, there's no way that, Chad, as good as you are at explaining things, there's no way you can convey what that's really like. Exactly, and, and you know, it was a $150,000 project. We got three local companies to each kind of give in 50000 so the order went in at the end of the year, um, at last year, so uh, it should be installed sometime in April and be opening to the public in May. Is it okay to mention them, or are they anonymous donors? Um, I think they're anonymous donors okay. at this stage, but they will, it will probably come out. Hopefully they'll share that at some yes. point, because I'm sure there are other businesses in the county that will want to step up and assist with this project as we move along. Yes. Uh, but yeah, what a, what a fabulous opportunity for our young people. Um, one, one, one of the other things that we, you know, we don't know where this fits, but any kind of federal designation comes other opportunities for federal funding. So, you know, I think our schools need to start thinking outside, you know, the box on how we can engage our students in the waterfront and the Good lakefront point. because there's going to be a lot of opportunity. There's already been opportunities presented to us um, mm -hmm. for education related to the water and that kind of thing. So, you know, we always say there's going to be this whole plethora of additional opportunities for, you know, grants and different research mechanisms and stuff like that. Just from the designation and we've seen that in Alpena, Michigan where they actually take students out on NOAA research vessels and they're using side scan sonar and they can you know find new shipwrecks that were never discovered before and those types of things so I mean there's there's in the classroom there's in you know in this technology center and then there's getting right out on Lake Michigan and being able to experience it firsthand. Right and I you know if you wouldn't mind going back just a little bit to the SEMA lab you know, I don't, I'm not sure what exactly that stands for, but I, I'd love to hear your depiction of what that is, how that looks, how kids interact with it. So it's really a 10, it's really, it's like a workstation thing and there's programming set up around that. So some of the things that are 
involved with it like our wind tunnels and you know different ways of how you lose your gravity when you're in space and all kinds of you know that stuff okay. so it's really tied to what astronauts basically would be doing on a day-to-day -day basis but it's programming that's then tied to uh, kids there's this is it's about a million dollar project um, you need about it's 250,000 to get it going and then they require so much in operating costs for five years um, mm -hmm. The closest one right now to this in Wisconsin, in, to Wisconsin or to Sheboygan is in Cleveland, Ohio. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's, they're spread out all over. They're typically partnered up with universities that have an aeronautics program. Um, but there's also places where they've been in, they've been planted into, you know, specific museums and stuff. So we really feel there's a great fit there with what um, Spaceport has done and what they do with programming on that aeronautic side of things and the whole space piece of it. Um, to be able to leverage that, they've got the room in the current layout to do it. Um, mm -hmm. It's just about getting the money to contract with uh, NASA and then they actually bring in NASA, NASA trainers and they have real-time aero, uh, aerospace people that are there with the students working with them. So it's a whole different array of NASA related programming that some of it is even hard for me to fathom because I'm not you mm -hmm. know in that field but it definitely it brings it real world real time right to the students and I think you know if you talk about return on investment there are so many levels at which that will play out exactly there's that first level of tourism mm -hmm. where we actually have numbers where we can project how many dollars and Correct. I don't recall the number do you the number ranges in the in the ballpark from nine million up to a seven hundred and fifty six million so the everybody always says well what's and that's on visitor spending and everybody always says why such a range because that's based on capturing a portion of the where that population that would be spending the money is driving up the I-43 corridor to go to Door County every day. So how would we grab those people off? So if we were to get 10% more mm -hmm. visitors and the spending related to that, you know, would be on the 10 million side. But we could also, if we got up to like 50% more uh, visit, you know, visitors coming into this area that were spending money, it could be, you know, well into the hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, so this mm -hmm. is, and that's based on the these are real-time numbers on a conservative field from what Alpena, Michigan is saying. Right, and, and which El is a very rural area. Exactly, and Alpena, Michigan mm -hmm. is 100 miles from the nearest interstate, so you have to be wanting to go there. And they see 100,000 visitors in a community of 10,000 people a year that are just coming to the sanctuary and what they have to offer. So we, you know, this is a whole other level of, you know, innovation on our tourism side of things as well. So there's, you know, two key components and I'm a firm believer that, you know, tourism drives economic development. Absolutely. So, you know, this is, you know, th these two will work hand in hand as we start to mm -hmm. build this infrastructure going forward. Come to visit, come to stay. Correct. That's kind of the other part of it, too, is the attraction piece. So, yeah, it's a, it has huge opportunity for everyone involved. Anything else that we haven't covered yet that you'd... Um, I, I guess what I wanted to just say is where you're going to see coming out in the news, we've, we've developed some fresh coast, we've developed a fresh coast Sheboygan um, video that uh, really kind of looks at this whole area and how this could be tied to workforce development and that kind of initiative. So we're going to continue to work through that and then work through the... Can people find that anywhere, Chad? Yes, I think it will, there'll be a link available on this program and we can get them linked into okay. YouTube to watch great, it. Great, great, because they should see that. It yes. Is, it's a great video. And then um, it really about just building this, you know, getting this going. We, we NOAA in, in Alpena, Michigan, NOAA has had a presence there with a Great Lakes Heritage Museum and research staff and those types of federal employees there. We don't know what that looks like for us because we're not one port in this sanctuary. You know, there's four ports, so NOAA mm -hmm. hasn't really alluded to what that model is going to look like here, but I think yeah. there's going to be benefits in each of the communities for different uh, research from our port, our port out to the lake and vice versa for the other communities. But, um, you know, I think NOAA has done a very good job with the program and they've done in Alpena and I think Alpena can be a great um, teacher for us as to how to develop these programs and get kids involved because, you know, we have this major resource right out our mm -hmm. back door and some days we take it for granted 
You know, and a lot of kids in, in this community and, and around the state haven't even been out on Lake Michigan. So how do we really right. engage them into that? And there's, you know, there's organizations such as SEAS, the Sailing Education of Sheboygan, that's doing an excellent job trying to get kids out on the water um, through different maybe youth sailing activities and boating, you know, activities and mm -hmm. get them tied to the water. Um, you know, the, the NOAA coming in um, and then the whole city side of things. So I think, you know, we've got the bones to this plan built. We just have to take it to the next step. And I believe that the NOAA officials also see that we have even more than bones. That is correct. I mean, they understand, they have a real passion for this project and, and are looking um, to these communities to build, I think, what we're all building. Exactly. And the relationships that have um, evolved from that, I think, are one of the, one of the very best things about it. I would um, agree. And I think they, the NOAA officials, the acting directors, were just in town a week or so ago, we had the opportunity to meet with them and explain our plan, and they seem to be very on board and excited about what this could mean for the Sheboygan area. So look for a link to, to see the video. Um, stand by for more information. What's the timeline now as you understand it? Um, we see, well, the, the spaceport, I mean, the science on the sphere would be phase one, and like I said, that'll be coming public and, and being open to the public in April or May. Um, the designation we thought was going to be a two-year timeline. Now we've heard from them that they're going to try to bump it up and get it done before the presidential elections, which would put it in the September-October um, timeline. Um, so we'll see if that comes to fruition on a federal level. Um, and then the, the SEMA lab was hoped to be fundraising over the course of the next year and then uh, at the end of 2018. 2017 to have it installed, open in 2018. We had originally thought that would line up well with the designation process, so <laughs> if it, it may or it may yeah. not. And then that, you know, final science on the sphere thing would be, you know, probably a neck, uh, within the next five years, but I think there's some real, there's some real benefit and there's some real opportunity that could happen with it, especially with the fact that there's going to be some additional room tax dollars coming forward once the bonds are paid off at Blue Harbor you know, that those are going to mm -hmm. have to be dedicated into some type of tourism-related use, and this is a perfect Perfect timing. Yeah, perfect timing. I thought that was just a great thing that that has evolved right now. Yes. So we're, uh, we're looking good in the years ahead, I think. We are, and we've got a lot of other great assets to add to that, to this, for this county. Well, and you take that and you add in all the other things that are already here um, that draw people, that bring people here as tourists, that encourage people to stay here. Correct. Uh, I think we're, we're sitting well. So thank you, Chad, for all the work you've done on this and the team, yes. too, um, that's been working on this in Sheboygan County. Uh, looking forward to hearing the next reports in the chamber. We will be try to help in getting that information out and, you know, helping to make sure our companies are participating Correct. in what goes on in the future. We appreciate so, it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Our next segment, we are going to be featuring Steve Harrison from Old Wisconsin Sausage, and we're going to talk to him a little bit about his company and the expansion and, and what he sees in the future. Welcome back to Love Where You Live. In our member spotlight today, we are going to feature Steve Harrison from Old Wisconsin. Welcome to the program, Steve. Thank you, Betsy. Just, you know, just to give a little overview about Old Wisconsin to our audience, tell us, start maybe with the history. I'd like to hear about how the company began. And well, there was a couple of folks that used to make sausage in Elkhart Lake, and then uh, the two partners split. One moved to Sheboygan. Uh, it used to be called Thielman Sausage Company, then moved to Old Wisconsin Sausage Company, and now we use the the company title is Old Wisconsin Sausage. So it's a pretty long, colorful history, but uh, um, you know we've built uh, several additions in Sheboygan and mm -hmm. we'll be continuing that uh, tradition over right. the next couple of months. Yeah, you are in the process actually right, right, right. now. And tell us a little bit about your um, number of employees, your locations, and then this new location and what that's going to mean to the company. Right. Um, well, right now we have about 260 full-time employees. Uh, we have another, because our business is somewhat seasonal, 
Uh, we make sausage products, so they're entertaining type items. So over the summer months, over the fall months, our business increases pretty dramatically. So we employ probably another 120 to 150 temp employees during that season. So, um, you know, if you put everything together, we're in the range of about 350 to 400 people at any given point. Wow. Okay. And this new facility? What it's 104,000 square feet uh, right off of the I-43. And um, it'll give us a lot of uh, new opportunities to, to service customers. Uh, what we've seen over the last couple of years is the demand for our products has grown uh, quite dramatically. And um, so occasionally we're not able to meet all of the demand, so we disappoint some folks. Mm -hmm. So this is going to give us a new chance to kind of re-earn the trust of those people and make sure that when they place an order that they get it on a timely basis. So you've been a relatively quiet company, but I notice your new facility is right off the freeway. Is there a strategy involved in that? Well, I think we've always looked at the interstate, uh, and the chamber was, was very kind to provide uh, um, uh, traffic numbers on I-43, but we're a consumer products company, so obviously mm -hmm. visibility is, is a component of what, what we look at, and uh, clearly with the amount of traffic that drives up the interstate, that visibility is a good thing for us. Um, the other piece of the puzzle was just working with the city, and um, I can't say enough about how the city has expedited the uh, process of the paperwork and the permitting and you know, from the time we started. Um, you know, these are folks that, that work very hard to find a way to make it work. Uh, we have other facilities uh, not in Wisconsin, and we hear the horror stories all the time about the municipalities getting in the way of, uh, of, of development. You know, they find ways to almost discourage development rather than encourage it. And, you know, whether it's the mayor, whether it's the city development department, whether it's the administrator, the common council, everybody's been very supportive of this project. Wonderful to hear. Wonderful to hear. What, I'm just curious, and I think other people may be too, what are some of the, first of all, what are some of the products you make? And then what are some that are maybe lesser known that, that people aren't aware of or that aren't brand new? Well, we're a full-line sausage company. Um, we don't make fresh products, so everything that we have is either smoked or cooked. So um, we've got a pretty substantial footprint in brats, wieners, hot dogs, ring bologna. That's predominantly an upper Midwest uh, component, but the largest part of our business is semi-dried sausage that's shelf-stable. And that product is really sold throughout the country and exported uh, to Canada. And we're working with Mexico now and other opportunities uh, in Asia. Um, so those pieces of the puzzle make it pretty exciting. But uh, the typical summer sausage that you might see, but really the bulk of what we do is a snack sausage. And, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, you'll find it in most convenience stores and a lot of the Walmarts across the country. Well, in fact, all of the Walmarts across the country okay. and almost all of the major retailers across the country. And, you know, it's really products that are kind of conducive to an active lifestyle because they don't need refrigeration. So you can take them on picnics. You can take them out hunting, fishing, boating. Um, you know, they're good snacks for kids. Um, high in protein, uh, and that's kind of a component of, of where we're spending a lot of our time is looking at the protein markets and uh, what right. other things we can do with those. Right, excellent. And Steve, you know, you and I know each other pretty well because you've been a, a chamber president for the past two years mm -hmm. and a chamber member for I don't know how long. Yeah, much longer many, than... Many, many years, yep. um, longer than I've been here. And you're still serving on our Business Education Partnership Correct. Committee. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with the chamber and the work that you've done there and what you see, you know, what you see in the future. Well, I, the energy, I think, associated with the current chamber, and it's a, a, a testimonial, I think, to your leadership and, and the new hires that we've had in, within the chamber. But when I first started on the chamber board, it was more um, a show and tell uh, with less engagement on the part of the board of directors, less engagement on the part of the members. And that transformation has been awesome. Um, to watch the level of engagement of, of the people that um, actually feel like they're, they're making a difference. Um, and whether that's Absolutely. with the board of directors or whether that's the other volunteers, I, I think you see a level of energy now that uh, not only within the community and the neat things that are happening there, but within the chamber itself that uh, 
Um, you know, it used to be all volunteer committees, and then it was all staff committees, and now there is a melding of a both point. the staff and the volunteers, and it's an extremely effective way of, of managing a lot of these, uh, a lot of these groups. And uh, I, I, guess, I guess the part that, uh, that I feel um, the most excited about is that the chamber is, is really making a difference. Mm -hmm. Um, leaving a footprint, leaving a legacy of the kinds of things that make our community better. And uh, that's probably the biggest change. And I think it's a change overall in the community. We have some phenomenal, great volunteers that spend a lot of time and energy to make this a better place. Well, thank you for your service on the board. Yeah, thank you. Definitely. And I would attribute it to the leadership that we have, um, the, the volunteers who step up, the people who <laughs> often spend many hours a week. Um, volunteering for the chamber and, and our board of directors, our committee members, all the folks. So. Yeah, I agree. So thank you for joining us today, Steve. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, you being here. And thank all of you for joining us today, too. You'll be able to see this program online at the station's website that you'll see on the screen. From all of us at the Sheboygan County Chamber, we hope you love where you live.